Fruit Show. Tonight, I'm your host, Benny Rizzuti, and this is your host, Nicole LaMonaco. Just for tonight or always? Just, always. <laughs> always. Nicole is always uh, the main host. Oh. And tonight, our guests are uh, Camille Theobald and Melito Apago, and uh, both two comedians who came from out of state, came to New York City, for, to pursue musical one careers. One from Utah, one from Philadelphia, yeah. and both in musical theater. And both musical theater and became stand-up comedians. What are the chances? We got them. <laughs> we got them. We got them. So yeah. we wanted to talk about a couple of things before we bring our guests on tonight. Um, you were mentioning stock jokes to me. Yes. And I... Uh, I don't really. I didn't really understand the whole uh, like a street joke, a stock joke, and then you said about the, the put two put your two heads together. And make like if you have bald headed guys in the audience and you say, uh, "Why don't you two put your heads together and make an ass out of yourself?" Right. That is considered like a stock joke. Oh, okay. Then there, a street joke is like a joke that a lot right. of people have heard, right. and sometimes people use those in their act. But I find some people take them and like you've heard the joke before, and they tweak it to make it themselves to make it like them yeah and um i don't like it <laughs> but it annoys me a stock joke is sometimes a line that uh you'll see a lot of people who host shows the mc will use right. lines and you say i've heard that i think when a That's host a does it though it's not it's, it's different it, it, it sets the tone a little bit because if somebody is being an ass then you would say yeah something like or that. someone has their feet on the stage yeah and you say excuse me sir have you ever been in show business yeah. and they say no then get your feet off the stage <laughs> you know so there are and one of the things about stock jokes is where did they come from there were comedians that used them right i think and the one thing i could think of the comedians from the 40s and 50s like bob hope and lucy and them they used each other's jokes and somehow they became stock jokes. They use like, like you were you were there, so you, I was you there. would know better than I would. I don't know. <laughs> but they, it seems like so. You wonder, you know, somebody wrote those jokes, right? But they've been used so much that nobody can take the credit for it. And you know, maybe somebody could like I heard one joke and someone said, "Oh, I heard uh, Richard Pryor use that," but then I've heard Red Fox use the same joke, right? Well, then they have things too that if it's I mean if it's the exact same wording then I mean it's a little weird but I mean there's parallel thinking out there where people will take something and just have the same idea but if it's verbatim like what you're repeating like but it's considered stock it's not stealing stealing yeah. is a different thing stealing if somebody took one of your jokes and, and yeah. used it right and that's a weird thing with stand-up comedy I find is that with stand-up comedy if somebody's doing a joke very similar to yours, the same premise, they're a thief and you go after it. But in music, you can cover someone's songs. Yeah. But you can't cover another person, even a dead comedian. Yeah. Like, like there are comedians I love that have passed away. But if I use their jokes, it's not like I'm not doing a tribute to them. No. It's not an homage. No. They're like, what are you doing? Yeah. No. Because I love Richard Pryor. Well, speaking of which, which totally went... Completely sour. I don't know if you guys saw Kanye West try and um, cover Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, I didn't. No. Oh, it was atrocious. It was absolutely awful. And um, yeah, that should never have happened ever and should never happen again. And they put like on Facebook like this battle between the two of them where it's like Kanye, like you, you see um, Freddie Mercury's face like. Like making like one of these faces, like okay, and then Kanye comes out and he starts like you hear the music and the crowd's chanting the song, and he starts singing and he's like doing his stupid Kanye voice. He's like, "Mama, ooh ooh," I'm like, "Shut up! I hate everything about you. I hate everything about you so bad." And then you see Freddie Mercury's face again, like, like look at this guy, look at this guy. And then it was like, it's whoever made it, it was really funny. And then Freddie Mercury takes over and like kills it. Everybody gets oh, excited. Freddie Mercury was. But yeah, like that. Don't know. Like, and you should but, know better. Like, if you're a musician or something like that. I know this is off topic now, but if you're a musician, <laughs> it's not and you're really. We'll bring it back. A great song, like like a really amazing song, like Bohemian Rhapsody, and you suck, and you like think you're the best. You should probably try it out on a few people first and be like, I don't do that, man. You know? so, yeah, the pay. Regardless of your ego or who you are, yeah. you should try it out first. Yeah, I don't know who told him that was a good idea. 
I don't know. I don't know. It was really bad. I'm actually furious about it. I'm so sorry. I'm real <laughs> I mean, there <laughs> were people that day. there were people that have written. I've knew comics that had written jokes for like Rodney Dangerfield, and then use those jokes. Right. And we were laughing, and then he turned around and says, "I don't normally use those jokes. I sell those jokes. I make money. You know." So I've seen uh, some guys who've written, and you and you can get away with that because you wrote it. Right. So you know, and some good stuff, but uh, but it, it's like. When a comedian is gone, there's so many. Flip Wilson was a great comedian I loved. And there's a few of his jokes I would love to do because they're funny. Right. But I can't because then you would say, oh, Benny's stealing off of the dead comedians. Yeah, you can't do that. Where if, if uh, I was a singer and I sang somebody's song, oh, it's a tribute. Right. You know, if I try to do it right. If I don't try to do it like Kanye with his right. ego. Yeah, the, because it's, certain things just have to be done a certain way. You can't pay tribute to someone and then ruin it. You know, then you just, you just if, like took a dump on their grave, basically. Like you didn't pay any <laughs> tribute at all. Right. Yeah. It was awful. But some people do uh, songs that someone else did, and they do it differently, and it's great. For uh, will I ever? I will always love you. That Whitney Houston made a big hit. Yeah. That was a country song written by Dolly Parton. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. The best, <laughs> the best little whorehouse of Texas. She wrote that. That was in the best little whorehouse of Texas, really? and it's, it's done completely different. Yeah. And then me and Bobby McGee, if you're familiar with, with everybody Joplin. says Janis Joplin. Chris Christopherson wrote that song. Really? Yes. My mom likes him. <laughs> <laughs> I like him too. Chris Christopherson. He's a he's a cool dude. Yeah. And he's funny. And the last, he wrote a song with Willie Nelson called Roll Me Up and Smoke Me When I Die. Oh. And Snoop Dogg is on that song. Really? Yeah, I'll play that for you someday. Okay. I, love, I love that. That's <laughs> that's going to be my funeral procession. I was just gonna, I, I didn't want to put any <laughs> bad wishes out there on you, Benny. I was like, I kind of feel like that should be something that's played at your funeral. Well, Hopefully, knock on wood. Thanks. That it won't be for a long time. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Wait, do you want to take want to take this conversation a little bit to... uh Let's take it right. to the next level. To the... Uh, about 10 years ago, I got a phone call, and I'm a bargain guy. We were talking about it. I I go for bargains. I buy pizza with a coupon. Someone <laughs> called me up, and they asked me if I was interested in buying a cemetery plot. Buy one, get the second one free. <laughs> so two for one deal. So I said, yeah, send the salesman. I'll buy it. Because, you know, as you get older, it's you need a, a plot. So Nan I tell again. Nancy, and Nancy's like, there's no such thing. You're not going to get two plots. But, so this woman, the saleswoman came, and yeah, I got two for the price of one. And I bought, we have two cemetery plots in Mount Sinai. They're next to one another? They do They're one, one on top one's of all the way <laughs> Nancy, you're over there. See you later. See you later. We will bury you with your cell phone. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's one. They do one on top, on of, top of each other. So, uh, so now... Nancy's friends who don't have our friends who some of them don't have uh, they haven't planned for their future teasing me that it's going to be under a dumpster somewhere <laughs> it's going may, maybe you didn't even and I have legal documentation so they're like you didn't you bought two for one you're an idiot you don't have a pl so and I mentioned this to my family one time too my family was like oh we should go there we should go to your plot and we're going to have a barbecue because my Italian family wants to have a barbecue. My cousin Fran says I have a hibachi. And my Aunt Marie, God bless her. Hibachi? Her, what, who are you, Japanese now? Yeah, well, because you just put the charcoal and you can grill on it real All quick. Right. So so we're going to grill. We're going to have a, a tailgate party on my cemetery. Make sure plot. they invite me. Uh, we will. And my Aunt Marie was like, I can make us something. Maybe a nice lasagna I make. And we. So. We're going to have it. it because the two of you will be dead and you make players. <laughs> that's, that's how it's going down now. Well, it'd be she's, Italian. She's thinking, yeah. Yeah, but we're Italian. You know, you got to bring something. We're gonna, of course. So we're going to have a tailgate party on my cemetery plot. I like this, everything about that. This year. All right. So Nancy, but that was the morbid thing was I don't want to see it. I know I own it. I don't want to go. This is where I'm going to You don't know, You don't know eternity. where it's going to be? You didn't see it? It's in the ground. That's all I care. What would I care? But Nancy's like, yeah, you don't know where it is. What if there's a tree? What, what if we don't like the neighbors? The neighbors are dead. There's going to be no crime. 
<laughs> Don't worry about the day. So we're going. So you can come with us. All right. That's that's. It's probably going to be the end of July. Then we're going to go check August. out where you're going to. Because I'll be on vacation. Be for the rest of your. I'll be on vacation, so we'll so. go and we'll have a little barbecue and we'll maybe we'll film <laughs> it and see if we get thrown out. All That'll right. Fun. Uh, well, you okay. Oh, we're we, going to film it. We're going to film it. Yes. We will film it. Uh, oh, I want to tell you before we go to a break that. Our show will now run 12-hour loop simulcast on iTunesUSA.com or iEntertainmentRadio.com, a 12-hour loop after this show. So you can hear it in your car, if you're on your phone. If You, you know how to do that stuff, it's get the radio. Bluetooth, and then you Bluetooth, just, you Bluetooth. hook your Bluetooth up because you want to be safe. And then you just connect to iTunesUSA.com and you just listen. Check it out. You listen to our show so you can hear it. And we, we've got some cool videos on there. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with our first guest, Camille Theobald. You watch us, Nigga Gutsu, or MadhouseTV.com. Hey! <laughs> Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multi Medicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multi Medicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we do 15 years. Vast array of diagnostic testing, from X-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. Find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy. Please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multi Medicine and Rehabilitation, located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000, or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. show with our very special guest Camille Theobald. Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm Good. so creepy right now. <laughs> I am totally creep mode right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the Cagoot Show. Thanks. <laughs> so Okay. No, I'm Go not ahead. gonna say. I was say gonna talk like Bob. Say it, say it. Hey, welcome to the Gagoon Show. <laughs> yeah. Is that supposed to be creepy? That's Bob Dylan. Uh, we are. We get creepy. <laughs> we get. We get yeah. goofy. goofy. We're goofy. Hey, hey. I think Bob Dylan sounds like a baby's getting stepped on. Wah, <laughs> wah. <laughs> 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 I put him on, so I become my best form of birth control. <laughs> 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 So Camille, uh, you're originally from uh, from Utah. Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. Salt Lake City. And or you... a little town called Murray, but it's pretty close to Salt Lake. Is, so. is the lake actually salty? Yes, it's so salty that you float and no one goes in it. It's disgusting. Really? It stinks really bad. You don't really? want to go in it. <laughs> I didn't know lakes could be salty. I thought they were just ocean water. <laughs> it, yeah. Well, I think the theory was that. Um, you know, it used to all be covered in ocean, 
and then as it went away, that area just stayed salty, or it's the salt flats or something. I'm not, I don't know. I was a kid. It's salty. Someone told me when I was a child, and I've forgotten all that you know weed. <laughs> and you came to the big city. I did. To... Uh, when I was 18, I moved here uh, with my sister, and I wanted to sing and dance for a living. <laughs> well, what, well, and you're doing comedy as well. Yeah. So you wanted to come and sing and dance, and it started when you were 10 years old. Right? Yeah. Where you were um, telling jokes, and yeah. you <laughs> started to get bitten by the, the comedy bug, as we say. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so I was always like a goofball, uh, just all the time, and always singing, and... Um, one day, my mom used to take me to the biker bar with her, and there was a like barbecue at the biker bar, and there was a joke telling competition uh, for the kids. And if you told the funniest joke, you got a Harley Davidson jacket. <laughs> so I went up and said, and said, "What do you get when you mix an elephant and a rhino?" Elephino, <laughs> and I won. I totally stole that joke, but I won. And <laughs> I think I heard my brother say that one time. Um, but that was funny. Yeah. So that was like the first time I told jokes. And from then on, I was obsessed with telling knock knock jokes as a child. I was like, knock knock, who's there? Orange. Orange, you glad I didn't say banana. You know. All the time, constantly. It was it was probably really annoying. I feel bad for all <laughs> all of my older brothers and sisters. That's funny. Um, but yeah, then I wanted to like dance and be like Britney Spears and who didn't? Right. <laughs> Oops, I did it again. Uh, so I danced, and then um, after going to musical theater school in Manhattan. Um, I actually realized I had way more fun with the funny songs, the goofy songs where I got to be like physical. And um, as I was auditioning, I was never getting roles that were like that. Because right. I look like Belle from Beauty and the Beast, or, you know, like the cute ingenue that falls in love. And yeah. I was like, this is not what I want to do. I do not want to do that. So I just stopped doing musical theater altogether. And started doing sketch comedy and stand-up. And how did you get in, involved with that? Like, where, what people did you... Who was the first person that kind of triggered your brain a little bit to be like, you, let's do something here? Like, yeah. Like, you know? Um, or I inspired I like, you, I should say. I really <laughs> liked, I really liked uh, Wanda Sykes. Um, and I grew up watching Seinfeld. And um, so I really loved, like... Comedy on TV was like a big, huge thing for me. SNL, Mad TV, I was hooked to those shows. Um, so I just, I figured I, I needed to like go out and do something. And I looked up open mics and found like this open mic at a New York comedy club and um, took classes actually with Laughing Buddha, uh, Jeff Lawrence runs that and it's just like uh, something to get me started because I had never written my own material before I was an actor you know I was trained to like take a script and make it come to life right. not write my own stuff so um, from there it just kind of like built up and um, I met good like good people to go out and and go to mics together with and uh, yeah just just kept going and um, built from there. That's awesome. Now when you, you, you say you stopped doing musical theater altogether, but do you in incorporate your music in your comedy at all? Like, I did at first. Um, the first two years I would do a little bit of songs and then <clears> and <throat> would stand up. Um, and then I had an online web series where I played ukulele and recited a letter to someone who pissed me off. So that was kind of like a way to do comedy. But I actually didn't start doing my ukulele letters on stage until maybe a year ago. Really? Um, but yeah, for, so for the last like three and a half years, I've just done stand up mainly on stage. Because I, I started getting associated only with musical comedy, and that's not what I wanted. Right. Um, I wanted to be seen as a stand up comedian first, 
and then also has this other thing that I could do if I want. Right. If it's a variety show, if we want to add a little you spice. You have that. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, though, that you have a little, like, you have diversity in what you can do. Now, those ukuletters, I saw one of those. Very funny. She <laughs> plays the ukulele and sings about people who, like, a, it was an apartment, and someone else in the apartment building that pissed her off, you leave your garbage out, you do, and yeah. she plays the song. <laughs> now, do you still make those videos? I haven't in a while. Um, I was doing it like every week for a while and then I started um, writing sketch comedy and uh, filming with different groups and doing that more and you would never think that sitting down and just performing a letter into a camera would take hours but it does. Uh, like setting up the right lighting and then writing it out making sure it's funny, editing it like it was a lot of work. So it came to a point where it's like, okay, so is my little weird web series more important or is getting myself out there as an actor and as a writer more important? So I kind of did that and part of me wants to go back to it, um, but it's actually had a lot more success live. Uh, it, as a live web series. As a live show, yeah. So I did, uh, it was in Solocom last year at The Pit. I did like a little 15 minute set with three letters and I impersonated the people and then wrote a letter to them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it was like right around when Cosby had his whole thing. So I wrote a letter to Cosby, of course, because <laughs> my name is Camille Theo Bald. Two thirds of my name remind me of Cosby. I had to, I had to bring it up. Um, yeah. That's very cool. And you were also on... Um Girl Code. Yeah, I had a quick scene on Girl Code. Um, I played a goth high school kid getting made fun of. <laughs> yeah. But you don't look like at all. I know. You do look very <laughs> angelic and very like... I know. I'm we well, I'm wearing my <laughs> cape today. Yes. Uh, yeah. She looks I, like Julie Andrews. Yeah, you? a young Julie Andrews. I get Andrews. that. I get that a lot now. Well, my hair was long then. So... I got cast as just like an outcast. I didn't realize it would be uh, like punk goth outcast. I thought I would just be like one of those nerdy kids who gets made fun of. Um, so I showed up with all my nerdy clothes and then they were like, no, we're gonna put black lipstick on you. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good to me. You got such a like, I. Have you ever done voiceover work at all? Yeah, yeah. yeah I just did a. You voiceover. have such a friendly, inviting voice. It's so <laughs> nice to hear speaking it into my ear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I know she's. It's like a little cartoon-ish. I don't know. It's she comes off like, very sweet, but her material will yeah. just knock you for punch a punch. Punch in the face. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She does some funny. Uh, that's some funny stuff. Yeah, I get pigeonholed as the good girl, but whatever. You but know. when you see her, I, I met her <laughs> when we first met. I, we performed together at a theater, so that's how I, I was talking to her out, out back in the green room. We were talking, and then when she went up, I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was gonna do jokes about how I love my dad. <laughs> I grew up in a beautiful suburban country. <laughs> Not I grew at all. up next to a trailer park. Awesome. <laughs> That's got to be a whole entire set in itself, no? Yeah. 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 Oh, there's My so childhood fun. is most of my set. <laughs> I got to bring my child. My dating life is most of my set right now. I need yeah. to bring my child in because mine was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you, you'll you come out with some great, you put such a great spin on all this stuff. Oh, thank you. you. Thank you. you. Do. I'm just a weirdo, but this is no, you're not. <laughs> this is Aren't we all? Yeah, we have to be, I think, when we're in here in this business, right? You can't yeah. be if you're normal, get the fuck out. Yeah, go. Sorry. See ya. See you oh. later. <laughs> Sorry, I said the F word. It's all right. That's okay. We we it's, will say that we'll I have say said it later. It times. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. many times. <laughs> but um yeah, you have to be weird. You have to be outside the box. You gotta be quirky and different and unique and my as my mom likes to call me dynamic. Because Dyna dynamic, you have to be willing to change the game up a little bit in order to be. My mom just says, I'll pray for you. Oh. <laughs> Your mom sounds like an angel. No. No. <laughs> I'll pray for no. you. She's the youngest, you're the youngest of seven children? No, um, I'm the second to youngest of seven. 
Um, but we're all half. None of them are full. What? Uh, my mom had three kids, my dad had three kids, and then I'm in there in the middle. So, <laughs> three different marriages on both ends. It's, it's crazy. Wow. It's a story. Yeah, it's okay. very much Brady Bunch. <laughs> Do you like, get along with all that? Shameless or something. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I do. I, I get along with all of I'm I'm kind of like a, the peacekeeper. Right. That's always kind of been my thing where I'm like, why can't we all just love each other? Yeah. Um, so I get along with everybody, but not everyone gets along with each other. Okay, got it. And now we were talking about how wholesome you, see, you appear. Mm -hmm. We're going to show a video. It's your favorite video yeah, it was that you have on YouTube. Yeah, it was the first sketch that I wrote, directed, produced, and put on YouTube. And close to 5,000 hits so far, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting a call. We'll, we're going to go to the video of... Uh, <laughs> we're going to go to... Uh, to the video. To, to the video of uh, Camille's My First O. You're watching The Gagoot Show on MadhouseTV.com and iTunesUSA.com, where you can listen. Okay. And, and we, we are back. And we're uh, back. We're just oh, having no. a little technical difficulties. I guess we aren't going to see her first O just yet. It'll be Wait. second time around be the second O. Um, <laughs> That's okay. It's technical multiple O's. We, okay. You know, sometimes it, it's, it's just that exciting. She's uh, talking. Right, she's talking to me, uh, but I couldn't yeah. leave because they said we're going back to you. I know. Uh, are we still I'm on? Sorry. We're still on. Okay. Oh. That's okay. Uh, um, so I got this idea. You're going to see it. Uh, I got this idea. I'll be right with you, Melita. I'm still Betty, on just here. Go, just go. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be right back. I'll be right We're back. We're going to talk this out. Um, bye, bye, Benny. <laughs> I got this idea because, uh, hopefully it's okay to talk about this. Men, like boys, they're kind of encouraged to masturbate. That they are. Women are not, and I think that's unfair. It is unfair. So I, uh, I wrote this little ditty. I happened to watch the video. I thought it was hilarious. It was very funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I, once we get things up and working, then you could, um, you could watch it. We'll get it airing later. And if by any reason we can't, you could can see it on YouTube, and you just type in my first O. My first O and far fetched comedy. Far fetched. There mm -hmm. you go. Comedy and. Um, it's funny. It's very funny. It's pretty much. Should we explain it? Should we explain it a little bit? Uh, I'll tell you. Like we. Uh, I don't want to ruin it. Yeah. We. Um. I shot it in Staten Island. You shot shot in Staten Island. Okay. Yeah. So it seems like we got things up and rolling here. So we're gonna go now back to the video, and uh, we'll be right back. You're watching the Gagoot Show on RedHouseTV.com. <laughs> Tonight's my 16th birthday party. <laughs> I'm a woman now. That's why I asked my parents for my first O. I don't want to leave my daughter in the dark while she's coming of age. So I bought her my first O. Now she can explore her sexual desires without becoming a slut. And to us dads, that's everything. My first O. My first O, it's so important that I know what it means to be sexually pleased. I don't need a boy, cause I have a sex toy that will keep me happy till I marry. I can't. Why? I promised my dad. Babe, it's just a little tonsil hockey. No boys, just toys. I mean, I have to go to the bathroom. I can take it anywhere to avoid male temptation. I just slip it under there and enjoy the sensation of my first home. Now comes in Shimmer Shine. 
or with the Jesus Loves You package, or with a Justin Bieber poster. Boost your confidence in bed with the positive affirmations feature. Choose a sexy male voice of your choice. Brad Pitt. You're not a slut because I'm only a toy. Ashton Kutcher. I totally love you and so does Jesus. Or for those who crave a wiser man's voice, Mr. Rogers. You're the only neighbor a man could ever want. No boy's gonna make a slut out of me now. <laughs> Baby, I'm gonna make sweet, sweet love. And we're back on the Goo Goo Show, and finally we got it up and running, and you guys just saw her first, though, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, fact, that was actually my first vibrator. For reals. The real one. It was for real my first vibrator. Did your parents really get it for you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I, I actually... Can I say this? I don't know. Um, Why not? You already said the other yeah, one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. I didn't start masturbating until I was 21. What? After I had been having sex for at least five years. So... Um, yeah, it was an exciting adventure, <laughs> and uh, I decided to write a sketch about it, <laughs> or based on it. So, um, yeah, I thought. Wait, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. And it's wait a minute. I, I just. I, yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Five years. Yeah. Of actual. Of actual sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of actual real life. Wait, let me think. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Oh yeah, about five. Yeah. I never. No. Because I was, I always thought you, you weren't have... supposed to. What? I also grew up in Utah. Come on. Okay, that makes you sense. You know, the guilt and whatever. I, I humped a penguin Christian. when I was like 12. <laughs> you Started did hum what? I humped a penguin when yeah. I was 12. Yeah. yeah. Catwoman <laughs> gave me my first erection. She <laughs> 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 did. Catwoman. Julie That's Newmar. Funny. Then when they had the other one, Eartha Kitt. I was already Catwoman's on it. Eartha Kitt. Who is it? My mother's like, That's a different Catwoman. Yeah. Do you make Nancy dress up in a cat costume now? Well, that's why you have six cats in your house. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have it all makes sense now. And one of them's name is Batman and Robin. Both of them are Batman and Robin. Betty, you dirty dog, you. <laughs> Batman and Robin. We don't have Catwoman. Oh, you do. That's, it's that's Nancy. Nancy. It's Nancy. <laughs> She's going to scratch my eyes out for this show. That's and right. I humped a penguin. This is all a Batman. It's a like, real pun? It's just penguin? No, it wasn't real. It was a stuffed penguin. Thing. I didn't um, know. I had 12 years old. I don't know what a, a penis would, looks like. I just saw there was a beak on it. So I was like, <laughs> I think this seems right. I don't know. <laughs> this is a very adult show. All right, so. Uh, so, yeah, oh, I mean. Uh, I got Jacob Cornwolf on it, and he's now been on Girls. Okay, uh, oh, great. And two of the other actors are, like, moved on to be, like, more successful. And so it's just so funny, like, this hap we shot this three years ago. And um, it's cool to see how much we've grown since then. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you should be very proud of your video Thank and you. your O's. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll be right back. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with our next guest. You're watching Melita Apago. <laughs> we're O's. We're all about the O's. <laughs> we'll be right back. You're watching the Gagoot Show on ManhasTV.com. I think this is a good time to tell you. You're doing okay, Mom. I can call you Mom, right? I know we haven't known each other very long, but you seem like a real keeper. You're not perfect. There was that strained carrots incident, but you're trying. You pick up my bottle every time I toss it out of my stroller. That's high comedy to an eight-month-old. You hum the barber of Seville when you wash my hair. So cool. <laughs> and your rubdowns are out of this world. Anyway, I want you to know how much I appreciate you. You know, right? How much I love you? You're doing okay, Mom.
professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Dunkin' Donuts are always fresh. I made the donuts. We make them at least twice every day. Time to make the donuts. Not a few kinds, like supermarket. Made the donuts. Time to make the donuts. But up to 52 varieties. The donuts. <laughs> Time to make the donuts. I made the donuts. Dunkin' Donuts, up to 52 varieties, fresh day and night. No supermarket can say. And welcome back to the Cagoot Show. And we're here with our other very special guest, Melita Apago. Hey, 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 thank you for having me. Oh, Poor woman's been in traffic for three hours. I feel like a school bus driver now, I'm <laughs> telling you. I just, all the kids and every, oh, please. But I'm glad that I made it safely. And this is a beautiful studio. Thank you. Yeah. I, I just met you 10 seconds ago, and I love everything about what's going on in the house right now. You are, so, you are like life right now. That's Actually, I wore this to housing court for that reason. I wanted to inject <laughs> a little energy down there. Yeah, you brought it. <laughs> you definitely brought it. I well, like that's it. That's why I'm dragging. It's like always something. But I'm so thankful that this was the end of my day, and that wasn't the end of it. Yeah, you know I mean? you're on a good note. Yeah. And you're on vacation now, right? I am on vacation as of the 26th, 70, well now 71, I'm counting down. 71 days of vacation. Wow. Great. Well deserved this year. This was really a tough year as a teacher. So you're, a, you're a school teacher I am a for school teacher our audience. Full time, yes. And yeah. what do you teach? I am actually the school's librarian. Oh, okay. So I get to tell stories. That's fun. Some lies. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I have an opportunity to read great stories to the children, poetry. We do it all. Reader's Theater. I actually just performed the Reader's Theater um, play on Thursday the 25th, and that was really nice. What play was it? It's actually a script that I downloaded. It's called The Master Man. And it's basically about uh, this one guy who thinks he's the strongest man in the village. It takes place in uh, West Africa, in the northern part of uh, Nigeria. And he thinks that he's the strongest man, only to find out there's a master man, and only to find out there's a stranger who's also the strongest man. Oh. So it's this competition. But you know how most African stories are like fables and or folk tales, and at the end they discover that that's where thunder and lightning comes from because of the struggle between these two power figures. Yes, it was really good. Oh, I, mean, I have cool. to say the children did very well. And you, so you're a school teacher who performs by day, by day <laughs> and a stand-up comedian by night. By night. I won't talk about my other night gigs, oh. but <laughs> on, the one that I focus on. <laughs> and you also do musical theater. Yes. I, well, it's been a while. When I first moved to New York from Philadelphia, I was uh, pursuing a career in musical theater, but then the comedy bug bit me, and I started doing more stand-up in the musical theater. Mm -hmm. And when you were doing your musical theater, did you um, were you doing stuff that was already written out for you? Or well, did pretty you much some of the standard Broadway pieces, uh, Ain't Miss Behaven, Dream Girls, Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, a couple we of things. That we were before. mentioning that earlier because <laughs> I was telling Nicole about how people have taken songs and made them totally different. Right. And Whitney Houston took a song from that that Dolly Parton wrote, I Will Always Love You. Wow, and transformed it. And transformed it, and both yeah. songs have won... Uh, Grammys? Grammys, uh -huh. yes. Yeah, I could see that. But that so, was in uh, Best Little Whole House in Texas. Yes, uh, Jules was the character. The lady who was like the uh, housekeeper and Dolly Parton's, uh, I wouldn't say right-hand person, like she helped run the uh, brothel. And that was the character you played? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 24 hours of loving. <laughs> and now you, you had started, though, in Philadelphia, and you were involved in theater in the oldest uh, theater? Freedom Theater Freedom is actually theater. the oldest black theater in Philadelphia, and it still uh, stands today. And you were doing comedy? Well, what happened, it was a, mu a variety show called Hot Molasses. And the artistic director at the time, Johnny Allen Jr., he's now an ancestor, he passed away some years ago. He said to me, you know you always make us laugh. I want you to play the comedian in the show. And I said, I'm not a comedian. 
Well, the character was, um, I can't remember, it's Doris, and I can't remember her last name. Please forgive me, it's like about 30 years ago. <laughs> but um, I just started doing a thing about my charge card. And you know how we spin, spin, spin until it's kind of bottomed out? And I looked at the charge card and said, the thrill is gone. It's gone the way for good. So, I mean, I did a little thing about charging and being who I was, and that just kind of expanded from there. Mm -hmm. And how did you cross over? I, I guess that was the start of, like, where you found your comedy in music. Well, I do actually, I have not worked it in a while, but I do a parody on the Dream Girls, and I'm telling you. Um, but it's like working in a dinner theater because I tell people it's not Broadway. It's the dinner theater version of Dream Girls, where you get to eat, um, you get sal a salary and all you access to an all you can eat buffet. <laughs> and basically, I'm put out from the show because when the customers come to serve themselves, there's nothing left. <laughs> and when you know, I approached this chef in the kitchen because I felt he was the one that ratted me out. And I tell him, you know, and I'm telling you, I'm not going. I'm not living without beef. I'm not living without ham. I don't want to be fat free. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> so I mean, I do a whole thing with that, and it's really good. I just haven't done it in a while, but I too plan to bring it back in my one woman show. And now you you still have no name yet for the one woman show? No, because my girlfriend said just write, 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 and the name will come. So I'm writing about my life. It's really about my life's journey, moving from Philadelphia, being married to two African men. I mean, I do a little bit of everything, visiting Africa, um, but I haven't given it a name. I don't want to yet. All right. It's still, it's still developing. It's like the baby. You don't know if it's a girl or a boy, so we don't <laughs> want to buy any clothes yet. I like it. I like <laughs> and it. I've heard that some writers, you write with without a title, or you also write without uh, an ending, because right. you have something to keep going, to strive you for. You allow it to evolve without so, like putting it in a box. Right. If you put it in a box, sometimes it's... You can't write it yeah. because you know where you're going. Well, you're so. writing to that particular point of view, and it doesn't allow you to expand. So I just want to keep it open, and anything that comes to me, I put it in it. So, so without yeah. a title yet, but the title will... It will make it. That, that it, will, it will introduce itself because you'll see all of these things happening. So you know what? Here's the title for this piece. That's great. And you have a little... catch. Like, some people have a catchphrase, like, or get no respect. They're, tell us what your catchphrase is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it comes from my mother. My mother used to tell you, you know, so-and-so walked down the street and she fell and I couldn't look at her. Mm-hmm. So she told, and I was like, mm -hmm. you know, everything she would punch with. Mm-hmm. So in honor of her, she's also an ancestor. That's where I got it from. And I just included it in the act. And I, I love it. I love it because, like, uh, my wife Nancy was with me when we saw Nancy. you, right? Tell Nancy I, said, yeah, I will, I will. She loves you. I, I want, oh my God. I just want to, like, be a fly on the wall with, with you and Nancy together in a room. Is she, oh, I, she has definitely got amazing. my energy. She they met so the one time, but we, <laughs> mm -hmm. we want to be, yeah. And uh, so Nancy, I said to Nancy, I wrote down, I said, uh, I said, Melita Pago is going to be on the state. Mm -hmm. And she said, who's that? And I said, mm hmm. And she and knew. She, right away, she knew. <laughs> hey, look, you may not know the name, but you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> he comes, mm-hmm. But okay. that's good. That's yeah. a good, because if people who have seen you in a con uh, perform comedy and don't remember your name, they remember that. That's true. I mean, I get it a lot. And they'll come up to me after the show and go, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was doing it after I watched the video. I was doing uh, it. So I'm like, mm -hmm. You gotta have something to remember me by, so that'll that'll work. I like it. I, I definitely stop. Oh, thank, thank you. Wow. Thank wow. you. Oh yeah, you should have. Benny, I like yours too, but you gotta pump it Thanks. up a little bit. <laughs> 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 I didn't know that. Yeah, you need a little. Uh, well, uh, I'm deflated here. Well, I was thinking of getting a hair piece, but I. For the show, okay. right? Somebody tell you know what somebody just told me real quick before we take this commercial break is mm -hmm. that sh they go you know I can't stand your hair it looks like roadkill I said what do you mean she goes, you look like you got one of those squirrel tails on your head you know what <laughs> haters don't hate on me I said well thank you <laughs> I have to like squirrel and then next week she has the same style yeah <laughs> when she first did it uh -huh. I sent her on Facebook a picture of Pepe Le Pew oh yeah. no <laughs> yes <laughs> you did yeah you did I actually here's a picture of Nicole. Monaco and it was Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> because, uh, but uh, I love what she does with the hair. I it's know. nice to have it up all the time. You know, what do you need? Two, you want two old people on the show? No. No. Okay. no. That's Season. That's We're not old. Season. No, I'm talking about me. I'm not uh, talking about no, you. No, me too. I'm not. Well, well, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we'll have all of our guests and ourselves here and um, Benny, because you, you do it so beautifully. 
You can also listen to our broadcast for a, on a 12-hour loop on iTunesUSA.com, iEntertainmentRadio.com. 12-hour loop after the show. Wow. See, You're watching the Gagoot Show on ManhouseTV.com. Yeehaw! Hi, I'm Tom Mealy from Madhouse TV, and when I'm not at the studio, I'm here at the Harrison Law Group. This is my real job. In this January 2015, Brett and I are putting together a show called Legal Straight Talk. It'll be aired on Cablevision as well as here at Madhouse TV. You need to tune in. This information that we're going to be giving the public is the real deal. It's all about what you should do, what you shouldn't do. So tune in this January 2015 for a new episode of Legal Straight Talk. feather pen yeah like a cool he did pen. he brought this pattern the nice. other day and it was it was just a, it wasn't a pen it was just a feather well, what's and the i was feather? like I wish where's the feather from that's a goose feather yeah wow. and where because is it wait so a long? goose or a goose a goose, goose. We have a we have a lot of geese on Long Island. I believe if you don't know. I know the feathers were so long, that's why I'm blowing there, yeah. there are areas with oh they're bigger than that, some of the wow. feathers. Big that's geese. Very nice. Very they creative, get, Benny. Uh, they get, I see they, the, I see <laughs> an entrepreneurial opportunity in there. Feather pen. Feather pen. Feather pen. Fresh from the we, goose bag. I we, think we should bring these back. Yeah, yeah. and we should, should have the Gagoot show printed on that. Nice. Would that nice. not be Here cool? Go. I would buy market it. Right All, right. All my jokes is only with feather pens. That's, that's it. it. All of them. A Gagoot's feather pen. That's it. Yeah. Gagoot. <laughs> now you two know each other before. We here. actually had an opportunity to work together. We was a theater with South Shore uh, Theater. South Shore Theater. Thank you for the name. Oh my gosh, that was a crazy pride. night. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. We had like five million people in the audience. It was a four. <laughs> it, was so, it was so. But you yeah. know what? They were the liveliest audience I'd ever yeah, experienced for such a small group. 
you would have thought the house was full. Really? They had a yeah. wonderful time. The lasts were rich. Yeah. That's really a good. Alan Scott's, Alan uh, Scott's uh, show. Uh -huh. Yeah. That he books. I'm trying to get Nicole on that. To oh, do yeah. it. she should Thanks. be on it. It's um, a fun theater because, it, as I mentioned, intimate. it's like stadium seating. Yeah. yeah. The seats go up and the audience is looking down. Yeah. Instead of the other way around. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Mm -hmm. I like that. But uh, afterwards, they give out one free drink um, to anybody who goes to the show. So we all went to this place where they give you a free drink, and there was karaoke. Yes. So all of the comedians signed up to sing, of <laughs> course. Okay. And then there was this really old guy who was just dancing up on all of us. He was getting oh, he was jiggy in concert. with it. It was like <laughs> he was in karaoke on, concert if there's such a thing. And <laughs> Sheila. And like there was a sa uh, Santa Claus there, oh, right, and we were all Christmas sitting time. on his lap, like taking pictures. We mm -hmm. were out till like what two in the morning? Yeah, I it was feel a long like. night. It was fun. Ah! Yeah. She can party, guys. Yeah. Party, you're right. Here. Hey. Oh yeah. You're never too old to party. No. I I didn't. <laughs> the first time we went, we our ticket says you get a free drink in time, but we didn't go for the drink. And I remember Brooke Arnold did the show with you that right. time. Right, Brooke and her and sister Kathy, right? This is a sister Kathy. No, that's not a sister, Kathy Arnold. They're the same. They're not related. Yeah, okay. not. with the two Arnolds. But yeah, the two Arnolds and they uh, were both on the show. They were both oh. on uh, the first time I went, and then uh, when I went and I saw that's when I met Melita. I met uh, someone else who's been on this show there. I think Sheila Smiley. Sheila Smiley wasn't on that oh, one. Okay. I met her. Okay. I remember with, I saw uh, name Camille. listed. Maybe but Kathy yeah. Arnold was on. It was a it's a nice theater. Yes, it is. Oh, Mike this. Keegan. Oh, Mike Keegan okay. was there. He. He closed that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, uh, okay. for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you guys do that theater often? No, I I've don't. done it twice. Yeah, I've done it twice too. So yeah. we're kind of even Steven with that. Yeah. It's just another thing of trekking it from uh, Manhattan to here is always a challenge for me. So you met here. You both you both live in the city, but you met on Long Island. Exactly. Yep. That's mm -hmm. funny. That's right? Funny. Yeah. Uh, it's it's nice to get out of the city though, and in front of normal people. You said normal. <laughs> Audience who appreciate you, they're very, people, you know, yeah. receptive and yeah. You don't get this, like sometimes you feel in the city they're very judgmental, all of a sudden they become comedy critics, even though they've never done stand-up. But I mean here, it was just such a warm reception and the people afterwards, well, when we went to the place that you mentioned, mm -hmm. it came up to us, we were dancing and you know, just had a wonderful time. I really, yeah. really would love to do that space again. I have to get into the city yeah. more often. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's hard to get there when you have a day job. Ouch. Yeah. But the city audiences, I mean, you had mentioned that they like darker. They a like little the darker, material. so um, I have a good amount of dark material that I've learned doesn't necessarily work out here, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, but the city loves it because I think everybody's kind of in that mindset of it's, it's rough, life is hard. It's not easy. Um, so, like, honestly, suicide jokes work in Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> not so much out here where everyone's happy. Right. And they're like, what suicide? What are you talking There's about? There's no happy. Why would I want to kill myself? Why would I want to do that? There's trees. When you go trees. to Manhattan, my rent is $2,300, and I'm living in a studio. I'm feeling suicidal. Yeah. <laughs> you live in a prison. Exactly. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So it, it is a little different, and, and it's also like generally like thirty somethings who have like long day jobs or day jobs that they hate, and they go out and <laughs> drink every day because they hate their day job. So yeah. um, it, it is different. I mean, there's still people who are great and happy, but mm -hmm. if you want to make a generalization, that's my. Or it's oh. tourists. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. yeah, I perform usually in a city before a mixed audience, so it's a little older, some young. So, you know what I mean? Anything could kind of work. Some of them, they like the clean, you know, especially yeah. those church audiences that I perform for. So it depends oh. on the audience, I guess, in the city. I but you're right about the younger ones. They like it raw. <laughs> I don't know if I would be allowed in a church. Don't, don't, let, don't let this look fool you. Guys. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, if they saw the Butter video we show, if they know. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, we have to say goodbye. All right? no. But we're going to end with <laughs> we're going to end now, so we can show your Melita's video, of stand-up okay, video. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> and I want to thank.
Thank you both. We thank both want to thank you, you and we'll have thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for coming. Woo-hoo. We'll have you back on. And thank oh, you for man. coming. I, <laughs> I know it's the drive time again. from Manhattan. I will come anytime you want. Multiple times she'll come. Hey, I'm driving her to the train station. Nancy, nothing's going. She's sitting in the back seat, Nancy. I'm scared. Uh. That's You're great. watching the Gagoot Show. We'll see you guys thank next you week. Thank you so much thank and you much so success much. with you. the show. This is a great show. Thank oh, you. thank you very thank much. You. You. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye. Put your hands together for Malita Apollo. Yeah.